Polymer blending is an, is an idea to combine the two properties together by simply mixing A and B together. And it's a simple idea. The reality is most polymers are not miscible. So here's a textbook, a figure 18.1, lists a number of polymers that are miscible. And this is a, uh, there are not many of them. Uh, this has this kind of a miscibility. So I'm going to highlight those samples are miscible uh, pairs. So polystyrene is polydimethyl pentylene oxide. We call the PPO, and that's the that's the probably the one that I'm going to elaborate uh, a lot more too. And the other polymers are or the polymer system is polystyrene by polyvinyl methyl ether. Polymethyl methacrylate, polyvinylidin fluoride, polyvinyl chloride, and the polybutylene terephthalate, and polyethylene oxide and polyacrylic acid. So those are the one with a check mark, which means that they are miscible. So there are not many. There, I think that I can I can also if you dig it in the literature, you might be able to find. Know, uh, several more pairs of polymer blend that are miscible. Most of the cases, uh, they are not miscible, right? This is a not miscible. And this is common. Pick any polymers that you, you have, they are not miscible. For example, low density polyethylene, high density polyethylene, right? They are chemically almost identical. They are immiscible. So this is uh, quite quite surprising, right? So most of the polymer chains are quite immiscible, and there there are some. This is a one of the very mysterious story that one of the triumphs that actually the uh, probably the, the most famous case where polymer blends are being commercialized, and this polymer is very kind of. Uh, interesting chemical structures. So let me show you this chemical structure PPO. This is a um, dimethyl is always there. So they just people people call polypenylene oxide a PPO. Okay, and then obviously the one in the bottom is a polystyrene. And this is a PPO was made by people in the General Electric uh, General. Uh, a G plastic. So okay, general electric scientists trying to make this polymer that has a pre uh, what they call the engineering plastic and this one has a glass transient temperature of 215 degrees C. Polystyrene is glass transient temperature of 100 degrees C. So it has a very high TG so it's a very stiff polymer but at the same time this means that this polymer is very difficult to process. Difficult uh, polymer to process. So this is the one of the actual story. Uh, this is a million, a billion dollar discovery story. Difficult to, to process. So they are, you know, putting this uh, PPO as it is, and people uh, were trying to process this in the what is called the extruder, the heat it up and trying to kind of uh, melt this one or softening these polymers and kind of make it into a spaghetti noodles. And, and then they, they started the compounding, putting a different fillers and so on. And one day, the, one of the G scientists, actually he was a technician who, f who find out, he was cleaning PPO uh, in the extruder with polystyrene. So that was an incident that this person is, because the polystyrene is a cheap plastic, mm -hmm. and you want to clean it, mm -hmm. so you, you put it in uh, to the hoppers, and you know, this is a, essentially pretty much this very simple diagram of, this is a screw and extruder, right? So he, he just put the polystyrene and the, to clean up the screw area, uh, and, and so on. And he he observed, this technician observed, to find out c 
clear uh, extrude date is coming out during the during the cleaning process the whole point is uh, the whole thing is clear when polymers are miscible they don't form the separate domains they form the homogeneous mixture so when A and B blends are miscible they form homogeneous mixture with a TG can be tuned by the, the composition then so they are homogeneous so optically clear so he found that usually when uh, he technician trying to clean the extruders by using cheap plastic such as a polystyrene, he usually see these very milky uh, kind of uh, polymers are extruded because uh, they are immiscible. But in the case when you're trying to clean the, the PPO, the clear plastics are coming out and he just start to think about there's something unusual about this. And this is uh, essentially find out the way that uh, there is a new method that can make uh, uh, new kinds of polymers, and this is uh, what people call it no real resin. Okay. If you look at the w Wikipedia pages, and we used to be the the G plastic, now the Cevic is a company that um, essentially making this no real PPO resin and. Uh, this is actually very close to the RPI. If you go to about south, uh, 30 minutes south from the Albany, there is a little town called Selkirk, and uh, they are actually uh, making uh, the the Savic bought this uh, the Noriel resin uh, plant uh, that was developed uh, earlier days. And now they are essentially uh, bought this, and then they are making these uh, products. Okay, So originally it was uh, invented by the GE scientists and uh, really the PPO is, a, is a one of the fairy tales in the polymer uh, material science history. The PPO itself may not be uh, such an attractive material because uh, it's, it's a difficult to process but in a way by putting the polystyrene as a blend component you are lowering the TG in a way, make it easier to process, and then you can kind of tune the mechanical properties and chemical properties. Polystyrene is not good, but PPO is may not be too good and too difficult to process. Right? So it is a good balance. This is what they mean by the good balance means by controlling the uh, chemical com the mixing composition. You can have a balance of mechanical chemical properties for a variety of application in electronic, electrical, and coatings, and machineries, and so on. Okay. So this is a, uh, I hope you guys remember the PPO structures. And also, this is a polymer class, so I wanted to have this opportunity to study. Everyone knows about studying uh, chemical structures. Polyvinyl meth methyl ether, this is a polymer that is mainly the academic interest, polyvinyl methyl ether. Okay, so this is a PVME, and the PS PVME, they are known for the polymer blend. They can have what is called the lower critical solution transition temperature. They have a phase separation at high temperature. Uh, LCST behavior is the one that they are they are showing it. So, uh, what that means is phase separation at high temperature okay but at the low temperature room temperature they are typically is admissible so that's why I think that they categorize as admissible polymers poly uh, vinylidene fluoride is CH2 CF2 you know, if this is a word to CF to CF2, then it will be a Teflon. But in, instead of all the uh, carbon has a fluoride group, and if you have a, uh, every other carbon has a, a 
fluoride substitution, you have a vanillin fluoride. So you can think it as a cousins of poly, uh, Teflon. So it has a very good uh, the, the solvent resistance and so on. And this uh, polyvinylidin fluoride is also miscible with with a PMMA. PMMA is a flexiglass polymers, and this is a, one of the one of the pairs. Okay, polystyrene and the PVME. These are the miscible pairs. Polystyrene and PPO. Those are the miscible pairs. And when you have a polyvinyl chloride PVC. And this is a polybutylene terephthalate, which is a cousin of polyethylene terephthalate. So P uh, butylene terephthalate means is a O CH2 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 CH2. So, so this is a polybutylene, and the terephthalate means so you have a terephthalic acid. So this is a P. BT. So as you can see from here, instead of ethylene, you have a butylene unit here that make it this chain is a lot more flex, a little bit more flexible compared to normally known as a PET. Uh, so PBT is a lesser use of a polyester compound, but it can crystallize much faster than the polyethylene terephthalate PET. So PBT crystallize uh, faster and because of that sometimes the people using for I think that as far as I know this one is used for the like um, uh, wind wheel blade they use, you know that the, the power plant the the, uh, the windmill the power the, the all the blade and PBT is uh, one of the matrix polymer they consider to use I, I remember uh, polyethylene oxide and this one I think that you should know it Right? The polyethylene oxide is ethylene oxide is CH2, CH2, oxygen. And so this is a water soluble polymer. And the polyacrylic acid is CH2, CH, and this one is COOH. This is also uh, water soluble polymer. Polyacrylic acid is is a is a main uh, one of the component in the diaper and the water swallowable uh, polymers and uh, they are using this for that purpose and they actually this there are so many of our uh, immiscible polymers polystyrene butadiene is an example and I guess a uh, hips high impact polystyrene was an example that was being used styrene and MMA they are non miscible styrene and uh, dimethyl siloxane they are non miscible nylon and polyethylene terephthalate, they are non miscible They just listed them as an example. But what is a, a rare is uh, actually this, this class of miscible polymer blend pairs, which is shown in the box in the green. And I want you to, to know about. And the particular, I spend the time in trying to uh, give you the historical even aspects about PPO and PS blend and known as a no real resin. And actually I go and find out some more use on the no real resin and no real resin is a blend of PPO and polystyrene. This is a really the one of the uh, fairy tales in, in the polymer materials development because if you know how to blend it and the polymer depending on, like I said, polymer blend uh, composition, let's say, depending on the uh, poly PPO composition, you can tune the properties, okay? And then and, and they, uh, they can tune many properties, and they can make different grade of no real resins for different applications, and that's one of the ones. So the tailability of the property is uh, one of the excellent uh, uh, features in the blend-based material developments. And good, it has a good electrical properties and the hydrolytic stabilities, dimensional stability is very good. And then one thing that is actually uh, kind of noticeable is uh, heat resistance is high and the non-halogen flame resistant packages. So it is a, a very temperature resistant material that you can see. And then I was trying to find an actual example 
and uh, the one that is uh, really is a non-brominated, non-chlorinated flame retardant. And that's the, one of the sales point of the Noreal resin because of the PPO has such a, a robust a chain uh, nature. And so that's, you, you don't have to use a halogen base because when, when you use a halogen base, a flame retardant, they cause, when eventually it burns, it, it emits a toxic gases such as an HCl gases, and that's not good. So they're trying to avoid those uh, halogen based uh, flame retardant. Uh, there is a need. And also, this is uh, obviously the uh, lower the fuel consumptions and emission because it can have a pretty good uh, mechanical property closer to the metal, and but it has a, it's a very light, right? That's a very good. And then, like I, I mentioned before, dimensional stability, chemical resistance is, is very good. So uh, many of the aut automotive part and this uh, Noreal resin can be used as uh, some of the components over there. And it's also because of the chemical stabilities that can be used in handling the fluid and, and it can have a chlorine resistance and hydrolytic stabilities and, and so on. So it, it's a, it has many other properties. I kind of chop it off here, but you can go and look for the Noreal resins and there's a, what kind of property they offer and you can see for yourself as well.